In this video, we're going to have a look at a couple M5 stack products. So we've got the Stamp Fly and we've got the Atom Joystick. So usually you'd want to buy these two together. So you can't really run the Stamp Fly without the Atom Joystick. Um, well, not that I know of yet anyway. So you might be able to just run it off the, um, the Atom S3, but to control it, you'd still need to sort of probably wire up some switches or even some hall sensors. Um, to sort of mimic the Atom joystick. Um, so we'll have a look at the Atom joystick first. So this is it. And it's quite nicely built. And all it's got is essentially you've got a 300 milliamp hour battery um, and you've got the Atom S3. And you've got two hall sensors here and two push button switches. Um, and you've got an on and off switch there, so you can just turn it on. So this has just got the um, the firmware to control the, the stamp fly at the moment. But if you wanted to, you can pretty much take that out. Put another um, Atom S3 in that you've got. Turn it on. So at the moment this has got um, Evil Parasite on it. So it's just a little thing. but. So it's got a, quite a bit of potential, this um, Atom joystick. So you could probably run different firmware. So even if they had like the evil Atom S3 firmware on it, and it'd be cool if you could use this as, you know, the controller for it. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of potential for this. Um, it's just about people actually making the firmware for it. So it doesn't necessarily just need to be something that controls the stamp fly. There can be a lot of other uses, um, use cases for it. Um, the other thing to note is that this also acts as the charger for the stamp fly battery. So both of these will come with um, one of these batteries each. So it's just a 300 milliamp hour battery. Um, and to charge it, you need to charge it in here. So I'll just turn this off. And it just slides into the groove here. And to, the way I put the batteries in is I'll actually grab the, the plastic bit here. And just use your finger now to just pull it in instead of using your finger to push against the battery because you might damage the battery cell. Um, and same thing to take it out, just use your finger now and just pull the black plastic out. I, feel, I find that that's probably the safest way to do it. And then you just use a, a USB-C and put it onto the bottom plug and that'll be the charger. So it's red at the moment, so it's still charging. Um, and when it's done, it'll turn to green. And we'll just have a look at the stamp fly next. So this is the stamp fly. So it's just running off a, um, a stamp S3. And it's got the drone body for it and it's got some sensors. So it's really um, nicely built and really cool. Um, so I've had to play with it and it's quite simple to fly, which is good. So the kids have really enjoyed um, having a play with it. And you can do little, if you press the, press that button down um, when it's flying, it'll do a little somersault flip sort of thing. Um, another issue I had sort of when I was playing with it is it was not really working and I couldn't work out what was wrong with it. So I'll put the battery in. Um, it was sort of flying up and then I just go all berserk. Um, and the way I sort of fixed it, or there's probably instructions, but I didn't read them, um, is essentially put the drone down um, and then you press the reset button when it's flat on the ground. And that should like recalibrate it and then make sure that it's um, all sort of um, zeroed out. So if I take the battery out, and to put the battery into the drone, all you have to do is, you've got this little battery connector here, and you just pull it straight out. Just try. So it's just like that. And that goes into the battery. And the light will turn on. So you've always wanted, I guess, disconnect this um, when you're not using it, because it could, it'll, you might drain the battery. And then you just gotta slide it into that hole there and 
and just make sure the wires are sort of pushed away. And it looks on. And because I've already synced this up, um, it should work straight away. And as you can see how the, it's, it seems to be a bit out. If I just press the reset, it sort of, it'll recalibrate it. So it's, yeah, it's, it's level now. Uh, we'll wait. Maybe it's going to sync up again. So yeah, it's good to fly now. So if I press fly, it'll fly up. Um, to a set level, so it's set to I think 0.2 meters. So I'll just hold it if it's working. Not sure what's happening. Um, let's reset that. And I'll fly up to the set level, and then you can just press to turn it sideways, and this will do a flip. So yeah, so yeah, it's it's quite easy to fly. Um, so if you're a beginner with drones and stuff, which I am, I've never really fl flown drones or anything. And it's um, really fun to play with, especially with the kids around. But yeah, so this is just a really quick look at um, the stamp fly and the Adam joystick. Um, so if you're interested in having a, a look into them, they're, they're pretty cool to play with. Um, I would definitely think the Atom joystick has a bit more potential um, if people are willing to sort of um, make a you know, firmware for it. So say the evil Atom S3 firmware was on this and you could use the joystick to sort of go up and down through the menus as opposed to pressing the, the screen as a button. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.